Hello, Jerry here with Season 3, Episode 22 of Ask Jerry Tashwa. Please subscribe to this channel, and if you'd like to ask me a question, simply go to my website, which is www.tashwa.com, and in the upper right-hand corner, there's a Contacts tab. Just click on that tab, uh, fill out the little information, and ask a question, and maybe we'll do one of these videos. Had to get that out of the way, because I always tend to forget that part. Uh, today's question comes from... Michael in London. Hello Jerry, hope you are well. First let me say thank you for all the educational content. You have kept me motivated and provided great suggestions and information. I have seen you perform numerous times at jazz festivals and concert halls. I believe I have most of your recordings. Of all the vibes players I've ever heard, you seem to always have an amazing sound whether it's live and particular on recordings. Your sound is absolutely the best. Can you talk about your sound and how you record to get this to translate to the actual recording? Thanks again, Michael. Well, Michael, I actually don't have uh, any big secrets to it, but, but let me tell you the things that I go through to make sure that my sound and my tone is really, really good. First of all, uh, regarding the performance aspect, you have to have a great instrument. You know, just if you have a great instrument that you really like the sound of and that it inspires you to create, then that, that's the key. So for, for live performances, obviously, that, that's just the most important thing. And then it's kind of up to the sound guys to, to try to get your sound of your beautiful instrument to, to go out into the audience. Now, regarding recording, I'm very fortunate in that I have my own recording studio. And when I built the studio, I remember consulting with a lot of different people about what I should look for and how I should treat the sound aspect, uh, the acoustical treatment of, of the particular room. And I got a lot of varied uh, suggestions and, and, and answers to that. But I've come to the conclusion that from recording in a lot of different studios across, across the globe, actually, um, I found that the best way for me to record is not to have the room dictate the sound. In other words, I want to have a fairly dead, flat room. I don't want to have any, uh, like a concert hall reverberation and delays and echoes and things like that going on. I would like to have a very flat room. And that way, whatever I record, then I can go ahead and add a little bit of delay or a little bit of reverb to get that kind of sound that I'm looking for. 
if you start with a room that's very echoey and very uh, naturally reverbed, then you're kind of stuck with that. You can't actually remove that from the mix. It's part of the sound that you got in that recording. So I like to start with a very flat room. So when I built my studio, I went through and I really paid attention to detail in terms of where the acoustics needed to be and how to achieve that goal of getting a room that didn't really project too many uh, you know, random vibrations and echoes and delays and you know, kickbacks and things like that. So I wanted a flat room. And then the next most important thing is find an instrument that you absolutely love. In this case, I fell in love with this Bergerot instrument. I am so in love with this instrument. It gives me the sound, the tone. It has the extra three, uh, well, five notes that I've always been looking for. So this is the instrument that really helps me to get my music across. Now, once you get your instrument, you have to get it record ready. In other words, you have to go through it. And again, it's a very mechanical instrument, so you have to find all the little buzzes and clicks and things like that. Fortunately, this instrument came and it was absolutely perfectly, flawlessly quiet. I mean, I didn't have to really do anything to it other than just make sure everything is tight and, and sounds real good. But a lot of the other instruments, especially if you have an older instrument, you really have to get out the duct tape and the, and the oil and go through it and find what's squeaking and buzzing and try to make it so it sounds real good. Uh, and then next, you want to come into your, your studio, obviously, and you've got to have good mallets. You've got to have a sound that the mallets will give you. And in this case, I use my own mallet, which is made by Innovative Percussion. This is the Jerry Tashua JT23 mallet. And I found after, after a year of going through prototypes to get this mallet where I wanted it, this mallet allows me to get the sound that I absolutely want whether it's a live performance, whether it's a recording, or it doesn't matter. It just, just works very well for me. The balance is superb, so I'm really happy with that. And then, obviously, the first thing you have to have is microphones to pick up the sound uh, of the instrument. Now, here's where it gets uh, kind of a personal taste, and this is where you sort of have to shop around and try a bunch of different things. But I have found, personally, if you find a fairly decent, it doesn't have to be a super expensive microphone, but if you find a very nice condenser microphone that you can get hold of, and condensers require an external power, they call it phantom power, and somehow it sneaks the, the power up through the actual cable into the microphones, but a condenser microphone has to have that, but they seem to get the best sound uh, for, for any acoustic instrument, and I really like them. I mean, there's other microphones out there that maybe you have a, a preference in, whatever, you, but you have to listen to microphones because all microphones have a different curve. Some of them have a boost at the low end, some of them have a boost in the middle and, or the high end, and I try to find a microphone that's not boosted on the high, not boosted on the low, fairly flat with maybe a little notch in the middle to kind of give it a little mid-range boost, and I, and I like that. What I do then is after the microphones leave here, they go into the sound, uh, into the control room, and they go through a, uh, a mixer, which then converts that digital, I mean, sorry, that analog signal into digital. And I record with Apple's Logic Pro. I've been using that now for a number of years. Uh, my daughter used to work for Apple. She was uh, one of the people that she taught Final Cut software. Anyway, so uh, she told me about this and, and I got hold of a copy of it and I kind of fell in love with it. So I got out of the Pro Tools world and, and I'm a Logic person now and I'm really, really, really satisfied with it. Works very well, I uh, have no problems and it works very well obviously with all of the Apple computers. So that's the series that I take. Now once I actually got my music onto the, the machine that recorded it and it's, it's in a digital format, and then what I have to do is, is mix it. And what I like to do is I find that I like, I like the sound to be warm. I, I don't really like a brittle sound, which is why my mallets work very well, because they, they give a nice uh, fundamental of, of the pitch without that ping, that real high, uh, nasty sound that I'm not real a big fan of. So anyway, if, once you get it onto tape, then you or not onto tape, but into digital format, <coughs> excuse me, then you, then you have to go ahead and mix it. And so what I'll do is, is generally I'll have a curve. 
<coughs> excuse me, on the graphic equalizer where I'll, I'll boost the mid-range. Like I'll leave the, the lows where they're at because they sound really good. And I'll give a little slight, like slight three decibels, three dB, right in the mid-range, somewhere around between five and maybe 800, just to kind of give it a little bit more warmth to the sound of the vibes. And then I leave the top alone. Or sometimes I might even cut the top because I, I really am anti that, 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 that real bright vibraphone sound. And then, then I have to decide how I want this, this tune to fit into a room. And this is where then you add things like delays and reverbs to kind of, kind of assimilate an acoustic environment that you like and you want the recording you know, to sound like. And I found that when you, when you play a ballad, ballads lend themselves very well then to adding some real nice lush long reverb with a long tail that's just kind of just milky and really, really, really nice. When, if you're playing a very fast tune or a fast bebop thing, you have to shorten that reverb because then everything starts to leak together and, and it's really a nasty sound. So you have to know these kind of things to be able to get a really good uh, the vibe sound. Um, a lot of times then I have a, a little chorus to the vibraphone, just a little uh, very slight amount of chorus to it and it just kind of gives it, I don't know, just a little bit of movement kind of a little like a swishy kind of back and forth uh, chorusy sound and I, very subtle if you put too much of it on it sounds out of tune so basically that's it that's all I really do to get my good sound and again the hardest thing is live because you're at the discretion of the sound guy that's out there and you know depending on his ears and his equipment and how he likes to mix you really have no control over it unless you can you know, have somebody go and say, no, look, this is too loud, this is too loud, fix this, do, 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 move this around. But uh, you, you have to like, be sensitive and try to work with people and work with what you have. But the, the recording environment is a total different thing. You can, you can really spend the time to get a nice lush sound by just making sure your instrument sounds good, it's an instrument you love, you've got the right choice of mallets, you're in the right environment, try to keep it flat in terms of no, no added effects. Don't ever record with effects, by the way, because once you record with effects, you're stuck with them. You can't remove them later. So I, I record everything completely flat. And then later on, I'll go through with that mix and I'll add a little bit, a little bit of you know, reverb, maybe a little bit of delay and, and a little bit of chorus. And pretty much that's all I do to get my sound. So I, I didn't really offer any kind of deep, dark secrets or anything, but I hope that helped you. And I appreciate your question. Thank you so much. And I look forward to more questions. So people, please just send them to me and we'll do some more of these videos. Uh, we're already into season three, so things are moving along really well. And I appreciate you and thank you so much and keep vibing. Have a good day. Bye-bye.